So let's talk about why all of you can and should be screening for cochlear implant candidacy. The reason is quite simple. Only 12% of potential candidates in the U.S. receive cochlear implants. In some data collection and analysis we did at the Long Beach VA in 2018, uh, we found that about 10,000 veterans probably should be evaluated, but only 300 per year were being evaluated. The key piece here is that meeting criteria means that hearing aids no longer provide adequate speech discrimination to communicate day to day. So your patient's going to kind of sneak up on you and they'll probably present something like this. This person's doing great. They've got really good word recognition unaided. Their audiogram's not terrible. Um, they love their hearing aids per their own report. Their AFAB confirms that the green bars on the bottom show that without hearing aids, they have difficulty around 20, 25% of the time, but with their hearing aids, almost nothing at all. A few years later, they come back and they say they'd like you to adjust their hearing aids. You retest their hearing. It's gotten a bit worse. Their word recognition has also gotten a bit worse. Um, interestingly enough, they do a little worse although not statistically significantly worse, aided than unaided. Um, their AFAB, however, shows a big change where they're having a lot more difficulty uh, without their hearing aids around 60% of the time. But even with their hearing aids, they're now having as much trouble as they were having before without their hearing aids. Fast forward a few more years, their hearing continues to degrade. They're now saying to you, I hear, but I don't understand. And the word recognition, even though we've tried several different levels, bears out that it's pretty poor. Um, their AFAB is showing now 80, 75 to 80 percent of the time, regardless of wearing hearing aids or not, they're really struggling to hear and understand. Before we jump into reviewing how I'd like you to screen these folks, Let's review a few terms. Our current uh, protocols for evaluating cochlear implant candidacy uh, involves using C and C words. These are consonant nucleus consonant words like goose, rec, shore. We're going to, uh, when we do our comprehensive evaluation, look at not only words correct, but um, phonemes correct. Uh, in your case, you're just going to look at words. DSL IO5 and NAL NL2 are prescriptive. Uh, hearing aid fitting formulas. Now, a lot of times the hearing aid fitting software will default to the manufacturer's version of these. I would recommend sticking with the actual um, original versions because it really gives us a better basis for comparison. They're both designed to provide maximum audibility of speech sounds. NAL NL2 is slightly modified to give a bit more comfort for those high frequencies. There's a technology in virtually every hearing aid available today called frequency lowering that captures high frequency information, moves it down to low frequencies, so it becomes more audible and more accessible to folks with really compromised inner hair cells in the high frequency region of their cochlea. Um, the best aided condition is an assumption we make when we do a cochlear implant candidacy evaluation. However, it's not really defined. Um, I define it as verifying audibility using probe microphone measures uh, to either NAL NL2 or DSL IO5. Using a recorded speech uh, signal, I use the ISTS signal at 50, 65, and 80 dBSPL, and really making sure we've optimized speech perception in the aided condition, and that may involve multiple passes, sort of a PB Max procedure. Uh, modifying different hearing aid features. To do your screening after you've optimized your hearing aid fitting and really verified that this is the best aided speech perception you can get, you're going to do an aided CNC at zero degrees elevation and azimuth at 60 dB SPL. You don't need to go crazy on the calibration. A smartphone sound level meter that's accurate to plus or minus 2 dB is fine. Uh, I'd it's ideal if you could do right, left, and binaural together. Um, and then if you can, add some background noise. If you can't do that, then then just a binaural screening will get will suffice. 
If your score is 60% or less, this person should be referred for evaluation. The links on this slide are uh, manufacturer specific and as well as an independent group uh, called the ACIA um, Find a Clinic websites. These will help kind of put you in there. But I would also refer you to this website. It's a really comprehensive resource for the entire group of people involved with cochlear implants. It also provides you with access to the test materials themselves, which are called the minimum speech test battery. Uh, current version is version three, in addition to score sheets and uh, really good guides and, and materials for both you and your patients. Even though we're going to refer these folks for evaluation, we need to do something now because as they've said to you, I hear, but I don't understand. So if you can optimize that frequency lowering, it's not a silver bullet, but it does make a significant improvement for a lot of folks. Make sure that your ear mold coupling is really optimized. At this point, I don't think it's appropriate for these patients to be using domes anymore. Um, and they're going to need more than just ear level devices. Remote microphones, media streamers, telecoils, uh, Bluetooth AuraCast is an emerging technology that's now available in several hearing aids and cochlear implant processors, but also make sure that they have access to emergency alerts such as smoke detectors and um, carbon monoxide detectors. A little bit of data that we collected in 2019 at the Long Beach VA, the red line here are the individual score, NU6 scores for 44 veterans who walked in with their hearing aids at manufacturer default settings for the frequency lowering. We then modified those uh, settings and bracketed back and forth until we obtained the optimal uh, essentially the PB max for these folks based on frequency lowering, and that's the green line. Important to note here, the average improvement was 19%, even without any training. Two weeks later, we brought them back for an AFAB, and the green bar shows significant improvement in reduction of listening effort in all domains uh, that we measure. These folks are just not going to be able to get by with 15 or 18 dB of signal to noise ratio improvement that they would get from a pair of ear level devices. They're really going to need that plus 20, plus 24 that you're going to get with a remote microphone. So, so look into those. Um, in summary, this is really uh, an important topic because with a 60% inclusion criteria, virtually all of us have several of these patients, if not many of these patients in our database, they're going to tell you when it's time to do this exploration by saying, I hear, but I don't understand multiple times a year. And as you can see, this is really not rocket science. We're not asking you to become cochlear implant audiologist, simply saying you should be aware of when these folks are starting to tip from amplification to probably doing much better with cochlear implants. Thank you.